electric is the way to go. go. The racing is good, it's, it's very different. But right now is the place to be. be. This is Inside E, the Porsche Formula E podcast. Hello and welcome as we go behind the scenes and chat to some very special guests within the team. So who's in the spotlight today? Well, he's been part of the Porsche family since 2013. He won Le Mans in 2016 and he was the first driver to be announced as part of the Formula E campaign. It is, of course, Neil Jani. Neil, lovely to see you today. Hi, thank you for welcoming me. Thanks for talking to us today. Let's firstly talk about your relationship with Porsche. You've been instrumental as part of the family since 2013, and it's been a very, very happy and successful relationship, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, very successful, luckily, um, because we all know how things can change in motorsports quickly. But uh, so far, this road has been uh, an amazing journey for me uh, since 2013. We have to talk about 2016. Cast your mind back to that weekend at the iconic Le Mans race. It's the pinnacle of motorsports, the one that everyone wants to win. What a weekend. Highs, lows, emotions. Relive it for me. Well, I think it's all my Le Mans starts with Porsche were a lot of emotions uh, we can start in 15 pole position uh, first Swiss on pole since Joe Sifford for me a very special moment and lap record at the time then the year after again pole leading the race losing the lead second position fort and back fort and back puncture shortly before the end of the race and thinking okay that's it and then the, the Toyota runs into issues in the last lap and then still win the race. It was like crazy. And then 17, the opposite, you know, leading the race easy. 13 laps advantage, that is that win was clear. And three hours before the end, we have an engine failure, which we never had in five years. So, you know, in a way, the, the emotions were just amazing in those four race starts I had at Le Mans with Porsche. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to more emotions. I know you started your career off in single seaters, but then when you made that decision to go sports car racing, Le Mans is the pinnacle. Did you dream of achieving it indeed and be part of a family such as Porsche, which has got a wonderful heritage? You know, when you grow up, you always think of Formula One. And then at some stage, I also saw Le Mans because I remember end of 90s when uh, the cars went through the air, the Mercedes cars. That's when Le Mans first time came to my mind and view. And then uh, obviously changing to, ro to sports cars after single seater and, and, and having a contact with Porsche, the brand. Uh, at Le Mans, but also when you grow up, you, you think about two brands, yeah, it's Porsche and then the red cars. That's when you what you think about fast cars and being allowed to drive for one of those brands uh, on, on international level is, is a huge honor and, and obviously Porsche and Le Mans, that's, uh, that's uh, an amazing thing. And it, Neil, it's very much a family feeling. But as well, being a Swiss driver, it must make you incredibly proud of what you've achieved to date in your career. I, I completely agree. I mean, first of all, I think it doesn't matter what nationality you are in the end. Uh, whatever you achieve, you achieve, and that's, that's great. But I have to say at Porsche, that family word is really something that is lived. Um, and I know from other brands, it's absolutely not the same. And at Porsche, it really goes from the bottom to the top. And at, at, at it ends at uh, Dr. Wolfgang Porsche, who, uh, yeah, gives you also the family feeling. And, and, and that makes you, you know, that yourself as a driver, you get ready to put everything on the line for that family then. And makes you perform also better. And I think that's also one of the secrets of Porsche to get the best out of their drivers or their employees. It's, it's something I at least have experienced this way. Coming up in our Team Insider chat, Neil talks about the intensity of the programme in the build-up to the road to Formula E. You know, I thought LMP1 was very busy 
uh, but I, I can actually now say uh, that was kind of like a holiday. <laughs> It was some months ago that it was announced that you were the first driver in the lineup for the campaign for Formula E. When you got that call, what were the emotions like? What were your thoughts? I, for sure, I was very, very happy. I mean, I was hoping for it for some time and I knew, OK, chances were good. Uh, but it's not clear until it's done, obviously. And uh, no, I was very happy to to start into this new adventure with Porsche. It's again a start from zero. Uh, it's anyway the official slogan, no? <laughs> but I had that. I had that start from zero also in LMP1, uh, and and now we have the same thing. Obviously, completely different task, different uh, difficulties, and so on. But uh, to do something like that with the manufacturer is is uh, is is a, a very big honor. And I guess to do it with a manufacturer such as Porsche where when they channel all of their energies, they give it 128%, which is what they did in LMP1, now what they're doing for uh, you know, their campaign, getting ready for the start of the Formula E campaign and championship. Yeah, clearly. Uh, you know, the problem is, the problem and the good thing at Porsche is, expectation is very high. So everyone expects you to win because second, Porsche doesn't come second. And uh, and Formula E is a whole new thing, you know. It's the first time actually we enter into a championship where 80% of the car is the same for everyone. Chassis, battery, tires, brakes. So it's very few little things we can change. And so we have to give it everything we have plus more to, to gain an advantage and to be competitive. So it is definitely a huge task ahead of us. Do you think it helps, Neil, that you know this manufacturer so well? And as you mentioned earlier, it is start from zero. You were first and foremost at the start of the campaign and development of the LMP1, and now you find yourself in a similar situation. Yeah, clearly. Uh, and, and, and I know the challenges we had in the LMP1 and the challenges uh, we have, we, we face now uh, for Formula E. And definitely it helps knowing each other, driver, engineers and so on, just because you can trust each other and they know, okay, he's not just telling, the driver is not just telling some stuff and we don't know if it's true. I know when the engineers tell me, okay, this is the way we have to go, uh, okay, I don't have to doubt it all the time. This way we can just decide quicker on some directions when decisions have to be made. And there for sure it's helpful that I was signed early to, to start a development process just to, to get some directions. Everyone's talking about Formula E. What are your thoughts about this electric racing series? It's undoubtedly the future. You've had an insight into it. What's your feeling? Well, they're for sure riding a wave right now. Uh, the series uh, is on the up upside. Uh, it has made an incredible uh, transformation in the last four years since it started, and uh, five years now even. Um, yeah, and, and at the moment, you know, with uh, how the political trend goes, uh, electric is the way to go. And, you know, I think the series still has to develop and keep developing because it's not done by just being good right now and it will be very interesting how everything develops but for sure right now is the place to be. Did it surprise you right from the offset the interest and the popularity of the championship? Yeah for sure I mean you know 2014 I was uh, I had the opportunity to go and drive there uh, but I just freshly signed with Porsche for the LMP1 program so I couldn't like cannibalize uh, myself on that one so but yeah the interest was from beginning there the racing is good it's, it's very different and in the end uh, you know right now racing uh, and, and the new generation of young people they they have a different understanding of racing and technology and so on and, and formula e seems to fill a, a certain gap there a new racing series a new racing concept how do you mentally approach a new championship such as this oh there's many ways i think first of all 
suck in everything like a sponge <laughs> because that's just information useless or not you need to you need to take it and then find out yourself what is very helpful and what not and then the next thing is yeah just trying testing good talks with the engineers have a look at the race tracks and learning learning it's it's basically what you need to do how hard is it when you've literally got a blank canvas as you say you're learning all the time the team is learning all the time in order to ultimately get the best product but how hard is it when you are literally forgive to use a cliche starting from scratch uh, clearly uh, very difficult because as i said uh, or mentioned before uh, this is a bit of a different challenge Porsche faces. It's really the first time we enter a championship or Porsche's championship where 80% of the car is the same as all the others. So they're not building their own chassis, they're not building their own brake, steering wheel and so on. Normally they build everything themselves. So this the same thing. So where can you make the difference? And that's in the details. And these details they also need experience in the championship and you know we can prepare ourselves as good as we want but experience we cannot buy experience we can only learn by doing and this is what we are in the hunt for as quickly as possible because that will also bring us results so give me a little insight into what it was like. You got the call, you signed on the dotted line as a driver. So it must have been or has been a whirlwind couple of months since then. Just give me a little bit of an insight into what the program's been like. You know, I thought LMP1 was very busy, uh, but I, I can actually now say uh, that was kind of like a holiday. <laughs> Not kind of a holiday, but in comparison, uh, clearly, yeah, a lot more work now. There's so much sim work, preparation, and yeah, life, racing life has definitely changed for me after after the LMP1, and it, it's got busier even though I'm not even racing yet. And what about the finer details that are so instrumental? Things like the seat fit, the rollout, the assemble first car, the testing. It's all landmarks, isn't it, in this whole journey? Us, yeah. I mean, they're the classical landmarks uh, we hit, you know, seat, signing contract, seat fit, getting comfortable in the car, getting to know the car, uh, obviously getting to know the team and so on. This is already has already happened before in LMP1. Um, but the big landmarks are still coming and that's the first race, that's first qualifying, first, uh, first issues, you know, first quick decisions you need to make on a race weekend. And that is what we are trying to prepare the most. But as I said before, that's experience and experience you cannot buy. Still to come in our Insider Chat, Neil talks about the aims in Porsche's first season in Formula E. In our first year, clearly, we want to challenge, we want to be around and we want to fight for podiums. That has to be the aim. What's it been like with the testing program? Give me an insight into, into what that's been like. Well, first, first step was clearly to check how the whole car runs, uh, check our um, uh, power unit and, and also check reliability. Reliability is the first thing. And once reliability is working, you slowly go into performance things. And now we're starting to think about performance things, you know, set up tires, etc., just to make the car quicker. You're the man to ask this, but when the car was unveiled to you, what was your initial thoughts when you actually got in it and started testing? Just give me the vibe of what it was like. Well, we're still waiting uh, for the newest livery. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I, for sure, the first run in the car was, was, uh, was special, but at the same time, uh, <laughs> we did it in Weissach at, I think, zero or minus two degrees. So it was also cold and I needed heaters around my feet and so on. So um, it was a special experience. It was a cold experience, I would call it. <laughs> you wouldn't expect that as an answer, I guess, normally. But considering the type of cars that you've driven before, how different is it? 
It is different in terms of noise, obviously. There's a different noise. I still hear an engine sound, yeah, but it's more mechanical noise. It's not the exhaust noise. So that is different. But in terms of driving, the, the new car, Generation 2, is, is, is a good car to drive. And I think the biggest thing to learn on this Formula E cars are the tires, the, because they're treaded. And we're used to slicks. And they need a bit different handling and looking after. While the car now is already on a very good level with brake by wire and, and, and the carbon brakes and so on, there, uh, yeah, it's, it's a car, you know. In the end, it's a car, has four wheels, and you need to drive it. You mentioned the Porsche family at the start of our chat and how important is it. Do you think it's helped that you know this team already from LMP1 days and that bond has already been created? Ah, without any doubt. Uh, knowing, first of all, the team knows what what I did in LMP1 and what my performances were, so they don't need to doubt, oh, what's, what's he doing? If Does he know what he does? Is he giving us bad feedback or is correct the feedback? And, uh, and I know uh, that I can trust them. If they tell me the car is okay like that and that's the direction we need to go, then the same thing. And as I said, this is how you make quicker progress. And that's why I think it was important to sign early and from beginning, from test day one onwards, to keep developing the car. How extensive is the program? You said you're busier than ever as a driver, but how extensive, how intense is it? It's very extensive because we have all the simulator work. A lot of software things now in Formula E are important. And since test day, testing days are actually limited to 15 days, you have everything in the sim and and that's a lot of action there uh, a lot of hours in the simulator but also a lot of hours in debriefs and uh, yeah that makes it long days it's an intense program so what comes next for you in the next couple of months which of course are instrumental leading up to the start of the championship well, we're testing again formally in, in July, so back on that, and then, uh, yeah, sim, testing, sim, then testing on track, sim, and so on, forth and back, and, and just looking for everything we can. Uh, yeah, intense work ahead. As a racing driver, it must be so exciting to be involved right from the start. Is it a case of you can't wait for the season to start or you're still thinking there's still so much work that needs to be done? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when, when you are from zero, <laughs> starting from zero, you know you can make a lot of things good and correct, but at the same time, you know you can also mess up a lot of things by going the wrong direction. And, and there you need to have the trust. And I'm coming back to your last question. That's where it's good when driver and team know each other. So starting from zero is a huge challenge. And, and you can do a lot of wrong directions. But I believe uh, we are focused enough and we know what we're doing that we, we hit the right direction. And how hard is it? It's a team effort. But psychologically, you no doubt feel so much pressure on your shoulders to make this happen as the driver. Ah, in the end, the driver is the one who is out there alone and uh, they see him. And, you know, the result is no good and it's the driver. And, yeah, we know that. We know we're exposed. And uh, we, you know, I'm, I'm used to the pressure at Porsche because qualifying at Le Mans was also, even though it doesn't count for the 24 hours a lot, but it was still a big thing. You know, the, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's part of the game. You cope with it. But on the other hand, it gives you opportunities also because pressure means you're in a situation where you can perform. So I, I look at it more as an opportunity. And as a manufacturer, Porsche never do anything by half measures. This campaign is going to be no different. Do you envisage when the season starts strong contenders? You know, for sure we're not doing any half things, but where does it bring us? We don't know yet because we have no references. The special thing in Formula E is we cannot go just on a track where we know lap times from other teams because those tracks only exist a day and then they are not existing anymore. So it's very hard to know where, yeah, we're basically fishing in, a, in, in the sea. We don't know. 
Uh, and that's why in our first year, clearly, we want to challenge, we want to be around, and we want to fight for podiums. That has to be the aim. Can we, win, can we fight for more? I think this will be very difficult already, but who knows, you know, we're trying our best. Finally, I think I know the answer to this, but you thoroughly enjoying this time in your career, being involved in this particular project? You know, the last six years since I signed at Porsche have been amazing. I mean, also before, the whole journey has been amazing in my career. But my greatest success is I've lived with Porsche and uh, clearly I'm looking for more because that's, that's the fuel for motivation and for energy to, to put into such projects. But it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you today. I wish you all the best with the campaign, Neil. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. If you'd like more information, follow Porsche Formula E on Twitter and Instagram or visit the Porsche Newsroom. See you next time. Inside E, Porsche Formula E podcast. Podcast.